Golden State Media Concepts bring you Book Review Podcast, a haven for bookworms of all ages and the widest genres from mystery to memoirs, romance to comedy, fantasy to sci fi. If you love to read, this is the podcast for you. It's the Golden State Media Concepts Book Review Podcast. Hello and welcome to the GSMC Book Review Podcast, brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network. I am your host, Sarah. I am excited to be here with you on this third day of January 2023, our first interview, our first episode for 2023. That is crazy. I hope that you had a wonderful New Year's. Um, our nephew came in on Saturday, and we so we picked him up at the airport at around 8 p.m. and then went down to the beach in our village here in Portugal. And um, there was a band, and there were fireworks on the beach, and he was a trooper because he'd been traveling forever. And there was a delay that he got he got stuck in Dallas for 24 hours, and so he was supposed to get here on Friday, got here on Saturday. Um, so he'd been traveling since forever <laughs> by the time he got here and he, yeah he left he left montana on thursday got here on saturday which is, is terrible but then we he was a trooper like i said we went down to the beach listened to the band had a great time watched fireworks over the ocean and it's been really fun having him here so that's what we've been up to for the past few days which has been a a lovely start to our 2023 hope that yours is off to a great start as well whatever it is you maybe have been doing hope you rang in the new year with loved ones and that your 2023 is going swimmingly so far <laughs> Um, today's interview is with author R.V. Minkler. We are switching to post-apocalyptic. Um, the book is called The Redeemed. Let me go ahead and give you the description of this. One child could change the future of humanity. Eleven years after a virus swept through the world, small spread-out gangs are all that's left of humanity. Vina Osborne and her mentor, Abraham Jones, lead the Tierrans to the daily trials of surviving in post-apocalyptic San Diego. Together, they cling to the daily disciplines of faith and life that keep them safe and alive. When Nate Sinclair stumbles out of a NASA-sponsored suspended animation experiment and into a world changed by catastrophic fires and pandemics, he finds his way to the Tierrans and to Vina. The miraculous preservation of Nate through all the trials of the world might be enough to keep a sterile humanity alive, but the spreading knowledge of his immunity threatens to push the surviving humans into all-out war. And so again, that is the description of The Redeemed. The author is R. V. Minkler, and it is, as you can hear, post-apocalyptic. So we've had a catastrophic, catastrophic event that has decimated the world population. They are trying to learn to survive in a new reality. You have the catalyst of the main, one of the main characters, Nate, who comes into this um, having had an experience where he missed a lot of what happened and is trying to catch up. Um, it's not the same situation at all, but for maybe a tiny point of reference, think, um, I just blanked on his name, Walking Dead, main character of The Walking Dead. Um, Andrew Lincoln, what is his name? In the, Rick. <laughs> um, so think of when Rick wakes up from the coma that he's, he's in and suddenly the world has changed. It's not that situation, but uh, that gives you a little bit of a point of reference for someone who's coming into this and being uh, a little a, a little out of their element. And of course, he's got extenuating circumstances that then lead to him with immunity, and he might have solutions for going forward into this new reality and this new future. And so you've got a lot of 
characters and character-driven um, plot in the book, in addition to dealing with what happens to the remaining survivors of the human race once something like this of this catastrophic nature happens. What what happens next? How do you move forward? How do you live in a world that is completely different than anything you've known before? Um, so that is The Redeemed, and I'm going to let the author, of course, talk to you more about it, what inspired him to write it, all those usual questions. So uh, let's go ahead and turn now to the interview. It is, again, the book is called The Redeemed. The author is R.V. Minkler. Hi, R.V. Welcome to the podcast. Well, thank you. I appreciate you inviting me and uh, willing to spend some time with me. Well, I appreciate you being willing to spend some time with me as well. We're going to talk about your book, The Redeemed. But before we do that, um, if you would please share a little bit about yourself, that would be wonderful. I would be delighted to. I'm a Christian, which says a little, hopefully it says a lot about me. Hopefully, if you knew me, you would recognize that. I've been married for 35 years which actually says a lot more about the patience and grace of my wife than it does about me. She is a loving and forgiving person, so I get to enjoy her company this time. I, uh, we have three children and four grandchildren. Um, I actually am a retired software engineer, and this writing the book is just kind of a passion I've had in the background for many years, and after I retired, I finally completed the book. <laughs> now, I, so, do I remember oh. reading correctly that you you worked on this book for quite a number of years? Is that is that accurate? That is. It was actually uh, a dream, a very vivid dream I had 37 years ago. And uh, it was stuck with me so strongly that I told my uh, – Children who were only like us, seven and 12 at the time, uh, parts of this dream. And my uh, seven-year-old son drew a picture of one of the battles in, in the book. <laughs> so it was just so vivid. And I couldn't quite escape the uh, dream and the concept, the vision that I'd gotten. So in my mind, I kept working it out and fleshing it out and the kind of the the, uh, the tale has evolved over all this time, so uh, it's become uh, more of a uh, faith-based story than it started out, which was just a more of a survival dystopian uh, post-apocalyptic uh, adventure kind of thing. Yeah, and can you give um, an overview of the story as a whole? Well, the story of the whole is basically some horrible events uh, happen in a very short time that just pretty much wipes out civilization, society, and almost all of humanity. Uh, I'm talking uh, less than 1% survive. Uh, and uh, after the immediate horrible events, uh, there since everything, uh, basically, infrastructure and everything is destroyed, people are starving to death and uh, fighting diseases, and the rem and gangs evolve. Gangs. <laughs> this starts to sound a little bit like uh, those uh, Australian apocalyptic movies, uh, and uh, the gangs evolve that you know steal resources, and so. My story revolves around a uh, tribe of Christian survivors uh, who banded together, uh, united by their faith, to uh, survive in this world. And the story is pretty much about, starts out 12 years after all these horrible events and uh, their survival. And all of a sudden, a mysterious stranger gets introduced to the story and changes the dynamics of the future. So <laughs> does that give you enough on it? it yeah, that, that's, a good, that's a good beginning. Um, it might intrigue people to check it out. I'm, I'm fascinated by the timing of things. And you had this idea, you know, 
several decades ago, but it ended up being published just as we were, you know, either in the midst of or coming out of a global pandemic. So uh, you want to talk a little bit about <laughs> the timing of the publication? Well, that is kind of interesting. Um, I, when I tried to conceive what could collapse society so fast, uh, it came to me that we would need events that would just um, devastate infrastructure. Um, we talk about the current pandemic, and you think about the current pandemic, it is an absolute miracle that we were able to get vaccines within the span of one year. Um, so uh, I think about when Stephen King wrote The Stand or uh, Jerry Purnell and uh, Larry Nevin wrote uh, Lucifer's Hammer, that uh, they didn't have, well, I guess in Lucifer's Hammer, infrastructure got destroyed, but both of them, uh, if their events weren't so catastrophic immediately that there could have been some survival and uh, some infrastructure that would remain that would produce things like a scientist being able to produce vaccines and stuff. So anyway, I came up with the concept of these global fires. Being in Southern California, wildfires was something I'm rather familiar with and it was kind of funny, just about the time I was getting ready to produce this book, we had catastrophic fires through California, Oregon, and uh, Washington State. The uh, residuals of those fires was drifting across the entire country. The other parts of the country in like Oklahoma, Arkansas were bursting in fires, and Florida, which I tend to think of as a very wet area, was bursting in fires. If you had something like that happening worldwide, it would disrupt air travel and everything else. Uh, it would overwhelm our firefighting capabilities. Uh, uh, power lines and everything else would go down. Now, the next thing that would have to happen is something to really drop the hammer. And that was, in my opinion, a pandemic, which, of course, guys like Stephen King have talked about long ago. So a sweeping pandemic without the ability of medical staff and medical research and other infrastructure, even hospitals, to uh, be able to treat it. And people are basically left wherever they are that survive the fires to uh, deal with this. Well, <laughs> uh, of course, the easiest uh, way to have a widespread pandemic was a respiratory illness. So it was kind of interesting when we hit this pandemic starting in uh, uh, 2019, that it was a respiratory spread uh, pandemic, uh, very easy to spread and, and uh, very quick to infect people. So <laughs> it was coincidence, but it's also, if you look at how such horrible events could happen, that's the way it would go, in my opinion. Sure. Now that you know a little bit more about the book and the reason behind it, we're going to take our first break of this episode, and we can all contemplate on how we would imagine, if, if, if you were to write your own post-apocalyptic post story, how do you imagine what the world would look like? What do you imagine would be the cause of it? What do you imagine would be the aftermath? What do you imagine uh, humanity would look like going forward? All very intriguing questions when you think about uh, sitting down and writing a post-apocalyptic novel. So we're going to take our first break. You think about that and more with R.V. Minkler when we return. You're listening to the GSMC Book Review Podcast, and I'll be right back. Golden State Media Concepts bring you the Bible Study Podcast. Reflect and journey the Bible as together we study God's Word and be inspired. Bible study made fun and informative for all ages. It's the Golden State Media Concepts Bible Study Podcast.
Welcome back to the GSMC Book Review Podcast. I am speaking today with author R.V. Minkler about his post-apocalyptic novel, The Redeemed. Let's go ahead and return to that interview. These types of stories are always really fascinating to think about because, you know, whatever happens within the story that that eliminates infrastructure and technology and a lot of those different things and people are, are left to live at a much more basic level and they have to sort of relearn how to do things. And what's our first instinct when we have to learn something? Well, we Google it, right? <laughs> um, <laughs> about yeah. Being uh, back and trying to navigate this world in a completely different way. Just finding reading materials mm-hmm. and then being having the right people who could actually understand what's being said would be an extreme challenge. Yeah. Um, so... I guess I cheated a little. I had some uh, members of a nuclear submarine who had survived all this, who had some of the technical expertise uh, being able to uh, help uh, advance society again. Um, And and, uh, hopefully you would find pockets of uh, uh, things like... uh, uh, solar systems and oil wells and refineries and uh, paper mills. Uh, just think about uh, if you lost things like Google, how would you communicate information anymore? Uh, you would have to be, go back to paper and pen. And where would you find the paper if there had been wild or uh, worldwide fires that had just consumed anything combustible, pretty much. Right. And how would you get that that letter or or the information when you'd written it to whomever you wanted to send it to? Because, it, you know, there's probably not a postal system anymore, especially no. if there's only 1% of survivors. Uh, yeah, probably not. Uh, uh, gasoline supplies, if uh, all the refineries and gas supplies were uh, destroyed in the fires and such, and and uh, probably terrorist actions afterwards. Gasoline supplies go bad after six months. A lot of these apocalyptics talk about cars driving around later, and the, unless it's diesel, that's not going to happen. And even diesel at best would last approximately 10 to 12 years uh, if you had the right additives. So uh, you're down to uh, horses, and uh, you, you've truly become back to the pre-industrial age type of communication and transportation. Yeah. You know, and as we talk about this, I can imagine for me, if I were writing something like this, I, I might find myself very easily getting lost in all of those details. What would this look like? How would this work? How would this? So did you spend a lot of time on the world building? Did, did that tend to suck you in or were you able to kind of figure out how you wanted the world to look and then move on with the story? Uh, well, by education and uh, occupation, I'm an engineer. So I had a lot of the basic knowledge about what is required and, and needed and, um, but I did spend some time thinking about it, and I had to do research. Uh, like I said, there are a lot of things to talk about. Cars existing well. If you look at it, gas supplies really are only good for about six months. So uh, within a year, if you had any gasoline, it's no longer uh, well enough to uh, be able to be used. Uh, of course, in my scenario, the roads are clogged uh, with wrecks and rusting hulks and stuff like that so i'm not sure you could drive around much anyway and it's also kind of amazing if you see some of these places like even uh i think around chernobyl and stuff if things are left unattended it's amazing how fast nature will reclaim it even through concrete and asphalt and then uh characters we we talked a little bit about the world but then there's uh there's quite a few different characters and viewpoints in the book but I, I think some of the main ones, Vina and, and Nate, maybe Abe also, um, you know, we can't cover everyone, <laughs> but no, can you no. talk a little bit about the main protagonists and what about them is going to resonate with readers? Uh, 
Yes, I, one of my reviewers or a couple of my reviewers were kind of overwhelmed by the number of characters I had. And I, I put in the back of the book basically a list of the people and uh, some of their roles just to help people along with that. But as you mentioned, there are three uh, main protagonists. Uh, Vina, who is the uh, athletic uh, daughter of an African-American man and a uh, uh, Caucasian woman of Scandinavian descent. And uh, her uh, protector charge, uh, Pastor Abraham Jones, who is a former Marine and uh, skilled in martial arts and uh, uh, defensive and offensive techniques. So uh, together, they're the ones who really survive. Um, and uh, Venus starts this journey when she's only like about uh, 12 years old. So when the book picks up, she's uh, 23, 24-ish. And uh, they are mainly a, a tribe of Christians, as I said, uh, mostly uh, women. Uh, with the introduction of a few men, Pastor Abel uh, being the previous leader and uh, the men from the nuclear submarine, uh, they are what remains. They are constantly uh, guarding against gangs, uh, ruthless gangs, which are almost all men, that uh, would prey upon them. And all of a sudden, uh, a stranger gets introduced. Now, Nate. Nate is the uh, future uh, love interest of Vina, and he has been isolated. I won't drop all why he has been isolated all this time, but he drops into the story 11 years after the horrible events, and he is completely overwhelmed by the changes because he's been in such isolation that he can't he can't understand the world that he's coming into. Fortunately, when he drops into this world, he's found by Vina and her uh, squad of uh, female warriors. And uh, they uh, show compassion and mercy and grace upon him and take him to Abe. And the story continues about the uh, development of personal relationships and intimacy between uh, Vina and Nate, because uh, Nate is also approximately 24, 25 years old. Now, in this new world, <laughs> there's a lot of dynamics of different roles. All of a sudden, uh, this uh, tribe, which I call the Tierrans at first, is um, primarily female-led. Uh, again, that was had to do with the early... Survivors, there were males, but they got killed off in gang warfare. And uh, the uh, Abe has guided these female, uh, mostly young girls, uh, into training to make them uh, a defensive force and able to survive and continue. And so there's kind of a flipping of the typical roles where they are the dominant uh, leaders. And they're... Uh, generally a mistrusting of any new men because of their experiences with the gangs. So they have those struggles. They try and work that out. And it, it takes Nate a while to uh, win their trust and uh, become a uh, basically a valued member of the tribe. But at the same time, this working together, this training together, develops a uh, familiarity and an intimacy that uh, matures. So, so despite all the obstacles, a desire for companionship and intimacy uh, allow things to grow and move forward. Yeah, and as you were talking, I was thinking that oftentimes um, post-apocalyptic books such as this you know, they focus a lot on the struggle and the hardships. And of course, that's present here. But you take the approach of there being a lot of hope within this story. Can you talk about why you wanted to make it a book about both hope and faith? Uh, well, as I said, I'm a Christian. 
and hope and faith are really the foundations of the our belief. Um, there's a hope that God wants to bring about good for those who are that He has called, and uh, you know, our hope in Him is there will be a better tomorrow. Uh, things will always be rough. He doesn't promise to make things easy for us, but he's always working for our good. <laughs> I used to get a kick out of an old Garth Brooks song, uh, I Thank God for Unanswered Prayer. How many times have we uh, prayed for something that really wouldn't be in our best interest? And so these survivors are going through terrible trials, but they have hope, they have faith that things will get better. And eventually that is rewarded. It's the timing that's so hard for us as mortal beings to uh, deal with. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're not the most patient of, um, <laughs> of creatures. Me in particular. We'll have to all be patient because it is time for the second break of this episode. So you'll have to stay tuned. Um, but we will be right back. You're listening to the GSMC Book Review Podcast. Tired of searching the vast jungle of podcasts? Now listen close and hear this out. There's a podcast network that covers just about everything that you've been searching. Hey! The Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network is here. Nothing less than a podcast bliss with endless hours of podcast coverage. From news, sports, music, fashion, cooking, entertainment, fantasy, football, and so much more. So stop lurking around and go straight out to the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. Guaranteed to fill that podcast itch. Whatever it may be, visit us at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter and download us on iTunes, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Welcome back to the GSMC Book Review Podcast. I am speaking, as you know, with author R.V. Minkler about his post-apocalyptic novel, The Redeemed. Let's return to the interview. The um, Would you ever return to this, this world? There's, you know, a new generation toward the end of the book. Would you return to their stories? That was um, my plan uh, to talk about the next generation and the next generation uh, needs to go out and find other survivors and uh, their generation because they, uh, they need that for growth. Uh, but um, it also will uh, involve a little bit of the human nature. Um, one comment I got, from a reviewer is this seems a little Pollyannish, this uh, tribe. And my response is, well, it's force Pollyanna, because if you were expelled from the tribe, that effectively was a death sentence. Uh, there's no way to survive without being in the tribe. You're uh, vulnerable to uh, the world, an untamed world and gangs. So if you're outside the tribe, now the next generation, things have improved, and all of a sudden, they're not in constant mortal danger all the time. And I felt that not only will they have their own growth and bonding, but there'll start to be some schisms that will form. Uh, gosh, I, I, sadly, I've been in churches where they have schisms. Uh, someone thinks something should be done differently, and that can lead to a breakup of part of the congregation. That is human nature. So that would be the next uh, next episode or the next, the sequel to the current book. Mm -hmm. Yeah, life and community, regardless of what that community is, can be very difficult. And so, you know, even once, once you're past some of the big major struggles, that 
present themselves in this book, you still have life and community. And how do you, how do you work through those struggles? Exactly. Yeah. That's a, exactly right. Yeah. And even though you say we share a faith or a hope or everything else, there's still uh, that uh, tension and, uh, oh, I guess, uh, need for self-validation or uh, grandizement. Uh, mm -hmm. I even covered a small episode like that in the book. Um, and it, it can happen over the silliest things, you know, like um, what color should the carpet be in the sanctuary? <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Do you have to wear ties in church or not? Exactly. exactly. <laughs> um, so uh, um, uh, in terms of the sequel, is that something that you're working on currently or is that in the future? Uh, sadly, that's going to be in the future. Um, I have to confess that I had to self-publish. And um, by self-publishing and getting publicity, I had to withdraw some uh, money from our savings. Now, I don't feel it's fair to my wife or uh, our plans together for me to continue to do that unless I could recover that money. And right now, uh, that's going to take a while. So it's hard for me to continue and produce a sequel with the prospect that I would have to be paying additional funds out of our own pocket just to do that. Sure. Yeah, that's fair. Um, when it comes to writing, though, and of course, you know, you, you 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 can still write whether or not you decide to publish that for whatever reason. But when it comes to writing, what do you think maybe drew you to the the post apocalyptic genre? I mean, obviously, you had the dream, but um, is that a genre you're drawn to in other in when you read, or would you have written in that genre without that dream? Uh, I guess I am drawn to that genre because I, certainly I have always enjoyed books like The Stand or uh, Lucifer's Hammer. More recently, you have the uh, Hunger Games, of course. And um, um, I'm, I'm trying to think of the uh, other one that uh, was based in Chicago. I'm going blank right now. That's a terrible thing to happen. Divergent? Yes, thank you. Divergent. Mm -hmm. So uh, I, I have found those interesting. Uh, uh, I also happen to like detective stories, but I'm not sure that I would be very qualified to write something like that. And uh, um, historical fiction, Ken Follett's uh, Pillars of the Earth, I thought was a fantastic story. Gave me a new insight on uh, the plague and all. So I... Uh, which I guess in a way uh, tempered some of my uh, uh, writing of my novels. So, yeah, you could say I have a lot of uh, interest in dystopian uh, stories. Sure. Maybe it's a discuss with civilization society now. I <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I mean <laughs> After watching the political processes the last several years, I could understand why I would feel that way, but yeah, I mean, never mind. It's an interesting, no, it's an, but it's an interesting concept to just think about all of the what ifs, right? Yes. Yeah. Um, so in terms of your journey toward writing, um, and it, it's, it's been your own path and it maybe has taken a while, but do you have advice for people who are maybe considering wanting to write? Oh, gosh, I have a huge list if you were willing to hear that. <laughs> uh, frankly, uh, you know, uh, uh, I know some people like to write longhand. There might even be some people who like to write with a typewriter. Uh, <laughs> I get a laugh out of that scene in um, Love, actually, where uh, oh, yes. the guy is typing by the lakeside and the breeze comes and takes all his papers and put them, puts them in the lake. Um, yes. I, I would strongly recommend that if you're not comfortable with computers and document generation software such as Microsoft Word, take classes and become comfortable because you'll be able to save, you'll be able to work with it. Uh, there's some really great um, uh, grammar review softwares. I personally like something called Grammarly. 
Uh, they have a free version, but there's a small charge for an expanded version, which I found worthwhile and uh, helps you uh, write uh, a better story. <laughs> One of my problems is I tend to use the same words over and over. If I did a search for a particular word throughout my volume, I'd see all of a sudden I had like 150 uh, instances of that word. I said, I need to find some synonyms. Um, I would always recommend uh, when you feel like you've got it is to get some uh, um, some professional uh, reviews done. Find things. I've certainly had friends and family help me review it, but a professional uh, reviewer would might find things and be willing to be a little more creatively critical <laughs> without worrying about hurting your feelings to help you find some story uh, shortcomings. And uh, there are a few online classes that would help you prepare for it. Um, uh, one of my mentors is Eva Shaw, and she has an online class, How to Make Money from Your Writing, which is very cheap to take and... Uh, there's another one, Manuscript Publishing for Novelists, a feed-paid uh, course that I thought was very worthwhile, and it's taught by Emily Harstone. So uh, there are things around that I think would really help you. Yes, absolutely. And um, I had Eva on the podcast last, some, not this past summer, but summer before last, I think. So, um, yeah, she's great. I've uh, been uh, received a lot of benefit from uh, working with Eva. So uh, I'm fortunate because uh, we happen to live close by. So <laughs> <Very good. laughs> I knew her before I started doing this writing. That helps. Yeah. Sometimes it's who you know. <laughs> yeah, yes, it is. I always like when there are connections when I speak with authors and they mention other authors that I have spoken with or am familiar with. And, and I don't know, I just like those connections in the the book world and my own tiny little place within those connections. Um, so we are going to go ahead and take our final break of the podcast. When we come back, our view will be talking about what he likes to read for his own reading enjoyment. So stay tuned. You're listening to the GSMC Book Review Podcast, and I will be right back. Golden State Media Concepts Sci-Fi Podcast. Together we dive into the world of sci-fi and science fiction. From episodes of Star Trek, Star Wars, to The Walking Dead, Resident Evil, all the hot new science fiction movies from the back doors of Marvel or DC. The Golden State Media Concepts Sci-Fi Podcast. You'll never look at science fiction the same way again. Welcome back to the GSMC Book Review Podcast and the conclusion of my interview with author R.V. Minkler. We covered this a little bit, but when you take time to read for yourself, who are your favorite authors? Well, I, I kind of mentioned it, a J.K. Rowling. Now, see, that's a completely different uh, kind of genre, this uh, magical uh, adventure story. Uh, that wouldn't be what I would typically do, but, uh, and I had no real interest in actually reading her at first, but I was traveling with some guys and they had one of her books on tape. We were listening to it and I said, hey, that's pretty interesting. So I got into that and I'm, a, I just love her writing myself. Uh, Suzanne Collins, Stephen King, Ken Follett, Michael Connolly. I liked almost everything from Michael Crichton and of course, Larry Niven and uh, Jerry Cornell. All right. Um, if you were, this is kind of a silly question, but I was thinking about that scene in the book where they come across um, a town that's pretty isolated and they're able to find books that haven't been destroyed or taken by other people. And they, they find how-to books, but they also find, you know, novels and poetry. 
if you had to make room in your backpack while you're traveling for one book that you'll add the weight to, what would it be? Well, the first thing would be some sort of survival guide because if you don't survive, you're not going to be able to enjoy the poetry or stuff. If I had enough room to take uh, uh, just something for pleasure reading, mm, uh, I know this sounds silly, but the stand, I just love the stand. I've bought that several times, including the expanded version. I guess that's why I wrote the story I did in a way. It's kind of similar in that sense. But, uh, uh, of course, uh, the uh, Bible and the Word of God is absolutely essential. Uh, after the immediate human is the spiritual and uh, cultivation of a good society would uh, benefit from that. And, of course, the story of the Bible also has a lot of horrors in it and it teaches you what happens when things go wrong. So, Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you can, yeah, you can find all kinds of community and what goes wrong in those communities, right? Yes. Yes. Um, how about um, Internet presence? Do you have a website? Are you active on social media? Where can people find you? I... Uh, do have a Facebook presence uh, under uh, RV dot Minkler. Uh, that's my professional Facebook presence, and I uh, also have a, uh, a presence, an author presence under TorchFlameBooks dot com. That's all one word: Torch Flame Books. Um, of course, they are the group that published my novel and. Uh, They've helped me quite a bit, and uh, so I, I like them, and uh, you can certainly find my presence there. I'm not real comfortable in exposing myself on social media. I uh, worked for a long time in very uh, restricted access kind of uh, environment, and presenting myself out there is kind of beyond my comfort zone, <laughs> but I'm there. Really? Yeah, no, the internet can be a very um, it can be a very scary place sometimes, and people are not always nice. Oh, no, the anonymity or being anonymous and being able to say harsh things seems to be yes. a favorite pastime of some people. It does seem to be that, yes. Well, is there anything that we haven't covered during our time together that you would like to highlight at this point? Uh, the uh, only other thing I would say for aspiring officer, authors is to persevere. There will be rejection. Uh, but if it's in your passion, persevere. Uh, certainly, that's what I had to do. Like I said, it took me 37 years to finish this novel. So yeah, actually, hopefully the people who read it enjoyed it. That's what my desire is, to read a story that you... Uh, enjoy and sweeps you away from uh, your current cares. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If anybody needs um, an, an example of perseverance and someone who really worked to make that a reality, they can, they can look to you. That's, that's very impressive. Well, that's very kind of you to say. Well, thank you so much for uh, your time and um, speaking to me. I really appreciate it. Well, it was delightful to talk to you. Uh, and thank you. I appreciate the opportunity. So, of course, thank you once again to RV for talking to me, taking the time um, out of the beginning of his New Year's weekend to talk to me about The Redeemed. If you are a fan of post-apocalyptic books, then this might be one that you want to check out. And this one might be compelling if you are interested in, um, you know, there's all kinds of different different groups that co would come out of a post-apocalyptic situation like this. There's all kinds of stories that would come out if you are interested in what a community of faith might look like in this situation. If that is, um, if, if you want a different perspective from maybe some other post-apocalyptic stories, then this might be one that you want to check out specifically because it is told from a the point of view of a faith-filled community and 
what that looks like, how that shapes their existence, how that shapes their interactions with the people that they encounter, etc. So that might be a reason for you to check it out over some other uh, post-apocalyptic stories, or maybe you check out all of the post-apocalyptic stories. That is completely up to you. But, um, you know, put this on your 2023 TBR if you are interested in this particular story. I cannot believe we are now 2023 uh, to be read list. Of course, if you're anything like me and all, most readers, your 2022 TBR list never got finished as neither did your 2021, 2020, you know, we're still all in the never ending to be read list cycle, I would imagine. At any rate, um, thank you to RV for joining me. Thank you, as always, to you, my listeners, for joining me. I hope that you will come back for the next episode. I will be speaking with author Donna Gordon. We are talking about her book, what Ben Franklin would have told me. And yes, there was a long pause there as I thought and double checked that I was making sure I got the title exactly right. What Ben Franklin would have told me. So I'll be speaking with Donna about that book on the next episode. So please join me for that. In the meantime, you know what's coming next. Please like, subscribe, follow on whatever podcast platform you listen to this podcast on. That way you always know when episodes come out. Also, a review is wonderful, just like you leave reviews for your authors and your books that you read. Hopefully you do that because it really helps authors, um, especially debut authors and indie authors, authors maybe who aren't as well known, really helps to get their books out to other readers. Leaving a review, whether written or starred, helps to get this podcast out to other readers and listeners and then those books too hopefully and we can support the authors that uh, make their appearances on this podcast also if you would follow the podcast on social media facebook twitter instagram and tiktok love hearing from you come you know check out the posts but also interact with me let me know what you're reading let me know what you think of interviews if you know you've heard of the author if you've heard of the books if you've read the books all of those burning questions that I love to hear the answers to. In the meantime, three days into 2023, I hope it is treating you extremely well. I hope you're having a great year so far. But of course, my wish, as you all know, is that 2023, or if you don't want to think that far ahead, the next month, the next week, the next day, gives you plenty of time to get yourself lost in a good book. Thank you so much. You've been listening to the Golden State Media Concepts Book Review Podcast, part of the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. You can find this show and others like it at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Download our podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Just type in GSMC to find all the shows from the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. From movies to music, from sports to entertainment, and even weird news. You can also follow us on Twitter and on Facebook. Thank you, and we hope you have enjoyed today's program. Thank you.